Hello, greetings, and welcome, my fellow thermodynamicists. Uh, so as we take a look at problem four, I wanted to take a moment to talk about uh, corresponding states theory as it applies to fugacity coefficient. Um, and then we can take a look at answering the questions and, and discuss then the application of uh, pointing correction. Um, I won't derive the pointing correction or, or spend too much time on the pointing correction um, as we have an entire screencast and set of notes um, on that talking about pointing correction, its derivation, and its origin. Okay, all right, but I want to take an aside first to discuss corresponding states theories. And so what we first saw, I believe, was in chapter two. Uh, let's see, where is my stylus? Let's see. Okay, so in chapter two, um, we introduced corresponding states theory for compressibility. Okay, and so namely, our three parameter corresponding states theory was the Z, was equal to Z naught, okay, where Z naught was a function of my reduced coordinates, so reduced temperature and pressure, plus omega times Z1, where Z1 was also a function of my reduced coordinates, my reduced temperature and pressure. And so the idea was, is that if you know the temperature and pressure um, of my system of interest, along with its critical temperature critical pressure and a centric factor, um, you could go look up Z0 and Z1 uh, in uh, the tables um, and then apply this equation to get an estimate of, of Z. Okay, then in chapter 5, we saw that there were uh, likewise corresponding states theories available for HR and SR. So if you were to look in the back of the book, oh, so if you were to look in the back of the book, okay, you would find tables um, for uh, HR0 and HR1, but the general idea is that um, of residual enthalpy, um, and I believe that's tabulated as R over TC, so that it's dimensionless, okay? But just in general, I'm going to write it as HR, okay? Um, RTC is just a constant, okay? So in general, though, we have HR is equal to HR0, okay, which again is a function of my reduced temperature. Uh, and pressure plus omega HR1, which is a function of my reduced temperature uh, and pressure. Um, and again, HR you might find written as HR over RTC. Um, that way it's it's dimensionless, right? Um, R times TC as units of energy, uh, the same units as enthalpy, right? And R and TC, right, just a constant, right? For given fluid, that's just a constant. Okay, we also had SR. Okay, SR um, likewise is SR naught, which is a function of my reduced temperature and pressure, plus a centric factor um, times SR1, which is likewise a function of my reduced temperature and pressure. Okay, now for phi, the equation looks a little different, right? And so what I want to talk about is kind of essentially the origin. So the, the idea was we said in chapter five, um, Correlations are available for HR and SR, but you won't find a table for GR in the back of the book. Okay, the reason being is remember G is by definition equal to H minus TS. Okay, so GR is equal to HR minus TSR. Okay, so um, if you can calculate HR from the tables and SR from the tables, you can then obtain GR. Okay, so there's no need for a separate table for GR um, because it could be computed from uh, HR and SR. Okay, now, you know, what does it have to do with phi? Okay, now let's talk about the, you know, kind of origin of, of fugacity coefficient again, if you will. Okay, so our definition of fugacity is that for an isothermal process, okay, so for an isothermal process, The difference in molar Gibbs free energy, okay, remember we're talking about a pure component system here, the difference in molar Gibbs free energy between my um, system of interest and we'll call it some reference date um, at the same temperature, right, isothermal, but need not be at the same pressure, is equal to RT log ratio of fugacities, okay, which are at the same corresponding states. Okay, so if I take my um, reference state or standard state to be that of an ideal gas at the same conditions, okay, I have 
G minus G ideal gas at the same T and P, which is equal to G residual, okay, at T and P, okay, and the right hand side, RT log F over the fugacity of an ideal gas at the same T and P, okay, fugacity of an ideal gas is just equal to P. Or uh, fugacity over fugacity of an ideal gas at the same T and P is just our definition of fugacity coefficient. Okay, so this would be RT log uh, phi, okay, at T and P. Okay, so what we have then is that GR. GR, my residual gives free energy at a given temperature and pressure, is equal to RT log phi. Okay, so there um, are tables uh, for phi in the back of the book. They're going to look a little differently, and we'll, we'll hit at that in a second. Okay, but the idea is, is just as we said in chapter 5, there's no need to tabulate G of R, um, because if I can get HR and SR, I can get G of R. In theory, there's no need to essentially tabulate phi. Okay, because if I can get um, GR, which I can get from HR and SR, uh, then I can get phi. Okay, all right. So um, the the expression for phi. Um, so there are tables provided for phi because it is used uh, quite often. Um, but the the expression that we're going to use is going to look um, a little differently. Okay, and essentially what we have going on is our general form. Um, is as such, okay? So our general form for our corresponding states theory is such, right? Z is Z naught plus omega Z1, HR is HR naught plus a omega HR1, uh, and so on and so forth. So if I were to, you know, get a correlation for GR, all right, GR, okay, would look like G of, GR is equal to GR naught plus omega GR1, okay? Or likewise, if I wanted a correlation for log phi, okay, remember RT is, is just going to be a constant, okay, um, it's a constant so that GR over RT is dimensionless, right, because log phi is going to be dimensionless, so these two sides just have the same uh, dimensions. So the correlation that I would expect for um, log phi, right, remember it's always log um, fugacity and fugacity coefficient that are related to our uh, molar Gibbs free energy. Okay. So the correlation I would expect then would be that log phi would be equal to log phi naught plus omega log phi 1. Okay. So how it's typically presented though isn't in terms of log phi, but in terms of phi. Okay. So if I play with my log rules, okay, omega times log phi, right? I could bring omega up here uh, as a power. Okay. So equivalently, this would be log phi is equal to log phi naught plus log phi um, 1 raised to the power omega. Okay. Then here I have the addition of two logs. I can convert that into um, multiplication of the arguments. Right? So log phi would be equal to log of phi naught times phi 1 raised to the power omega. Okay, cool. So that uh, finally then, uh, if I were to take the exponential of both sides, I'd get the phi is equal to phi naught times phi 1 raised to the power omega. Okay, so when you see this expression um, used in the book, um, and then you see tabulated values for phi naught and phi 1, you know, this gives you an idea then of, of where this foreign equation, you know, suddenly, you know, appears from, right? It, it, essentially, the, the expression that we'd expect um, is uh, log phi, uh, just as we had before for other expressions, um, but the book chooses to represent things in, in terms of phi. So if I were to go to the back of the book, okay, um, well, so this is uh, the appendix from Smith, Abner, and Van Ness. So in a, their appendix B, I could look up my critical properties in a centric factor. 
Then Appendix E, we have our Lee Kessler tables, right? So they have compressibility factor for residual enthalpy, entropy, and fugacity coefficient, right? And the tables for fugacity coefficient are going to be in terms of phi and, and not log phi, right? And then the final equation that you would um, use them with would be uh, this expression here, right? It's phi is phi naught times uh, phi one raised to the power of omega. Okay, um, so just sometimes that's confusing. Um, you know why we have an expression like that where everything else has been, you know, kind of this, this simple linear combination. Okay, all right. So now getting back to the problem at hand, then, okay, to kind of talk through it. Okay, the idea would be if we're asked to use the Pitzer equation of phi charts, so essentially Lee Kessler tables. Um, to estimate the fugacity of CO2 dry ice at its triple point, which is 216.55 Kelvin uh, and 5.17 bars. Okay, um, so we want solid ice or solid um, CO2. Okay, the general idea being is that at the triple point, okay, at the triple point I have uh, vapor in equilibrium with liquid and equilibrium with the solid. All right, so triple point I have fugacity of my vapor is equal to the fugacity of my liquid, is equal to the fugacity of my solid, okay, which is just equal to the fugacity of saturation. Okay, um, and so we are given, um, we'll just say a, a given T and P. Nope. So we're given uh, the temperature and pressure of interest, okay, and asked to calculate uh, essentially the fugacity of saturation at those conditions. And so the steps would be, you know, one, we would look in the back of the book for TC, PC, and omega. Okay. Then two, you would compute your reduced coordinates. Okay. And then once you compute your reduced coordinates, you can you know look up phi naught and phi one. Okay. Now remember the one challenge with the Lee Kessler tables is you may need to uh, perform a double interpolation to estimate that value, um, but it can be done, uh, and it's still a lot more accurate than uh, using the tables that are used in or provided in our textbook. Okay, so you would look up phi naught and phi one, and then once you have phi naught and phi one, step four would be compute phi. All right, I'd compute phi via this equation of, up here. And then finally, once I have phi, okay, so this would essentially be, you know, phi sat, all right, and get phi sat from, from this equation, um, you know, f sat then would just be equal to phi sat times, you know, the pressure I'm given, which is, which is p sat. So once I compute phi, I can multiply by p, and I have fugacity, all right, life is good, okay. So hopefully, hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, and then, you know, in B, in this problem, it's just going to be an application of pointing correction. Okay, and so what to look out for here is in A, um, we've estimated uh, the fugacity um, at its triple point, and we use the, you know, Pitzer equation and phi charts um, as indicated. And then it says calculate the fugacity of uh, the dry ice um, at 216.55 Kelvin and 70 bars. Okay, and so what's key here is that this state in B is at the same temperature as our initial state. It's just at a higher pressure. Okay, um, and so you essentially, um, you know, what we're trying to do is, well, again, we, we could derive the expression, but, you know, remember that, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, for an isothermal process, right, it's, it's you know, the difference in molar Gibbs free energy is that log ratio of fugacities. Um, so it's the uh, differential in my dimensionless G, which is, you know, related to the differential of, of log F, okay? Um, and so for an isothermal process, you know, that temperature-dependent term in our, our differential for G would, would go away, and we would just have to integrate the pressure-dependent term, which would, leads to uh, pointing correction. Um, so, so anyways, right, what's key here is that these two states are at the same temperature. Um, here, the pressure is just greater than that at saturation. So if here we, we calculated the uh, fugacity of, of uh, dry ice, which is the same as you know, the vapor or liquid or, or uh, just at saturation in general. So now we're at the same temperature, but a higher pressure. So we're in a compressed 
we have a compressed phase, so here we'd have a compressed solid. Um, and so that screams uh, pointing correction. And so basically, um, oh, and we're given density here. Okay, so this is CO2. So what we would need to do is convert this density to uh, molar density or, or molar volume, okay, and not pounds per foot cubed. Um, but the general idea then for, for pointing correction would be, you know, my fugacity, okay, would be equal to the fugacity at saturation um, times my pointing correction, which would be the exponential of, um, assuming that it's incompressible, would be a molar volume uh, times uh, P minus P sat over RT. Okay, um, how I remember pointing correction is just this exponential term is dimensionless, so PV has the same units as RT, right? It's dimensionless. You can think about your ideal gas equation of state. Um, and then this is my uh, pressure of interest minus my starting pressure, okay? Minus my reference pressure. Okay, and um, this expression here assumes that our fluid is, is incompressible. So in, um, incompressible. Okay, so for an incompressible fluid, my pointing correction takes this term. Okay, and again, this is nothing more than my fugacity divided by my fugacity at saturation at um, the same T. Okay, that's all my pointing correction is. Um, Okay, cool. Here it's exponential because we're dealing with, you know, F and not log F. Okay, so in order to solve B, um, I need to apply pointing correction. And so, you know, here it's just going to be a matter of units. V here is my molar volume, so we're given a mass density. So you'd have to convert that mass density to molar density and the molar volume. And then it's just making sure your units are consistent throughout so that this is dimensionless. Um, personally, I'd probably convert everything to SI units. Um, so then I could just plug in and, and know it'll work. Okay, but that's, um, that's problem four. I hope that helps.